Hi guys, it's Martha here with you for my February 2020 design team project for Country Craft Creations. And for my project, we are using the Cottontail Collection from Authentique. Super, super cute Easter paper. Um, very soft, uh, pretty colors. So that's the collection we're going to use. I've just put some of the cut aparts here and um, the little punch out sheet just so you guys can get a feel for the paper. So we're going to use that and then our chipboard is the medium weight chipboard also from Country Craft Creations and then we're using the um, the linen now I'm totally blanking on the name of it the artesian cardstock and this is like the ivory colored one so we're using that so we're going to start with our album uh, our album base and so our album is going to be 8 by 10 um, which is a bit of a larger album for me. I just kind of wanted to really let this pretty paper shine. Um, so I wanted nice big sections of it. And it is, I do find it's kind of a paper that looks better on a, on a bigger piece. Uh, Cause it's like, there's some sheets with lots of nice like collage type stuff on it. So it's just kind of nicer to, to see more of it. So our, our chipboard measures eight by 10 for the two larger ones, and then two and a half by 10 for the uh, spine piece. And I'm just gonna confirm that super quick. I'm pretty positive it's two and a half, but yep, yeah, two and a half. So we have two sheets of the artesian cardstock here. And it has a really nice linen feel, like on both sides. Um, so you don't have to worry which side you're gonna use. Um, and what I've done is I've just attached them together here with a piece of 3 8 inch um, score tape, which you can also pick up in the Country Craft Creations store. So I've got my 12 by 12s. I've connected them in the middle. And now I'm gonna start putting down my pieces. So I'm going to start with my spine piece and I'm actually going to put it right, um, my glue is clogged. I'm actually going to put it right by, right on the, where the two pieces meet there. And for that, I'm just using my, um, Fabri-Tac glue. So I'm just using that for my, my, to just glue my chipboard down to my cardstock. And I'm going to make sure to leave an inch at the top and an inch at the bottom. And I'm going to center it right on where my two pieces connected. And then once I've got that one down, I'm going to go ahead and attach one of my eight by 10 pieces of chipboard. Just get the glue all the way all over it. And we're gonna attach it about an eighth of an inch from our spine piece. So we're gonna leave a nice gap just so we don't get any cracking or anything like that when we are going to fold over our cardstock over the chipboard. So just get your glue all over the back there. And then again, drop it down and about an eighth of an inch from the spine piece. Usually the rule is two of the thicknesses of your chipboard is the space you're supposed to leave. But I just like to leave about an eighth of an inch. That seems perfect to me. All right, so now I'm gonna get a bone folder and just kinda just press it down a bit. The glue is still wet. 
so it should allow me to press it down. And we also want our Fabri-Tac to dry under there so that when we start to fold over our pieces that our chipboard doesn't move on us. All right, so now we've got that done. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut off a little bit off of both sides here. So we're gonna cut it so it leaves about an inch um, between the paper and the chipboard. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just go ahead and get some cut off. Alright, so that is looking really good. Just make sure I'm in frame here again. Alright, so now we're going to start folding over our pieces. We'll just get out some of this stuff out of the way. So we're just going to start gently bringing up the edges. And I do mean gently. Just work them up. Break those fibers a bit. And then then you can start to fold it down like so and then we can get the bone folder and give it a nice crisp crease All right, so now we've got all of our edges folded over. So now we're gonna go ahead and attach our score tape. So I've again got my 3 eighths of an inch score tape here. You could use, it's a brand new roll so I gotta find the beginning. You could use um, half inch, but this is what I have. So we're gonna attach it to all four sides of our chipboard and then all four sides of our cardstock. So I've got all my pieces on all of my score tape. Now I am just going to burnish it on nicely, just like so. All the way around, make sure you get it nice and flat. Very important to make sure you get it nice and flat. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to cut across our corners. So we're going to cut across right here, just like this, and we're gonna leave about an eighth of an inch. You see that little bit of space there? Between the edge of our chipboard and where our paper starts, we're gonna leave about an eighth of an inch, okay? And we're going to do that on all four sides. So we've cut all of our corners. So now what we need to do is remove the backing from two of our short sides of our chipboard, one long side, and then also from our cardstock here. So we're just gonna start folding it over 
and then just fold it out from the center just like that and since we've already pre folded everything pre scored everything it should all just go right down where it's supposed to so I'm just gonna do the same thing over here Okay, so now we've got all our pieces nice and folded over. So now we're just gonna take the flat end of our bone folder and just kind of break the fibers right there in our spine. And then we'll lift it up and then lift up the other side. And then we've got our cute little covered album. This artesian cardstock is just beautiful for album covers all right so now what we're gonna do is get our spine hider piece on here um, because of the way I do my pages I need to put a spine hider piece down first so what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our tape to both sides of our spine, not all the way to the top or not all the way to the bottom. So just like this. So we're gonna do it here as well. And here, and then a couple of strips in the middle because we don't want any bubbles in our spine. So just like that and then you can give those a good burnish down and then our spine hider piece that's going to go on top of here measures nine and three quarters tall by five and a half wide but all of the measurements will be in the description box below so now I'm just going to go ahead and attach my score tape to all four sides of my hider piece and then I will go ahead and burnish it all down and remove the backings So I've removed all the backings and the backings from my spine hider piece. Alright, and now I'm just going to attach that down equally side to side and top to bottom. So just like probably right there. Be sure once you attach it on, I cannot stress enough, once score tape has gripped, it's not ungripping. So we're just going to go ahead and burnish, burnish, burnish our spine hider piece on. Because again, we do not want any bubbles. Alright. Now we can go ahead and what I like to do is I lift the edge of my book and I kind of go across generally where I know my um, where my spine meets the front cover of my book and then I just kind of gently bring it up just like that and then we will do the other side so again just lift and move it and then again with the edge, the flat edge, we are going to go in just like this. All right, and then bring them both all the way in. And look, if you look down in there, there are no bubbles. 
the beautiful, beautiful album cover. I haven't done a white or ivory album in quite a while, so it's kind of exciting. All right, so that is our album cover done. So I'm going to lay it aside. And we are going to work on our pages. So for our pages, I just got everything prepped right here. For our pages, we are going to have three identical pages, but we're just going to put the elements on different sides of the page just to make it look a little bit different. So we're going to put the first page together first, and then I'll show you what I mean by kind of switching where everything goes. So you're going to need three base pages. So your base page is going to measure eight and a quarter by nine and three quarters. So it's going to be eight and a quarter wide by nine and three quarters tall. And you're going to score at half an inch and at one so that you have these two separate sections. And remember these sections are to make our book lay flatter, right? Because we're giving it that half an inch of space to lay on top of the previous page. So you're going to attach your score tape to the half inch, your first half inch section here is where your score tape is going to go, okay? So the first thing we need to do is attach our large pocket to our base page, okay? And this is where it starts to differ from the other pages but again I'll explain that afterwards so we're just going to attach it right here so this pocket measures eight and one eighth by nine and three quarters and why I did the eight and one eighth is so that it wouldn't go all the way to my score line here so that my pages just turn easier okay it's gonna leave an eighth of an inch of room between the score line and where our pocket starts, okay? So it measures eight and an eighth by nine and three quarters, and you're only going to attach tape on your two half inch sections here, okay? And again, this is the three eighths tape. And why we're doing that is our book is actually gonna have an open-ended pocket on both sides with a very large insert that you're actually going to be able to pull out the bottom and out the top. Um, if you didn't want that, you can go ahead and close the bottom and then just add a piece of tape here and close it up and then yours would only come out at the top. And there's a few uh, other variations you would have to do, but mine comes out the top and the bottom, okay? So we're just going to start by removing a little section of our the backing of our score tape here and we're just going to bend it back just like this and then we are going to line up our pocket to the front two corners of our page so we're going to line it up perfectly to the top two corners of our page and the bottom if you've got it lined up you can just go ahead and press down right here and pull the rest of that tape out press it down and use your bone folder too and then just go ahead and open it up that section and remove this backing and then just lay it down nice and flat and fold down and then just go ahead and give that a burnish. So now we've got our pocket attached. So now I'm just gonna lay this aside for a second and we're gonna work on the flap that goes across the top of that pocket. So our flap measures nine by seven and five eighths. And on the seven and five eighths side, you're gonna score it half an inch and attach your three eighths tape right here, okay? So we've done that. So this is going to attach to our page right here like this, okay? 
so we can go ahead and fold over our score line. Now we have a pocket that we are going to attach to the front side of our page right here. So it's going to attach right here. So our pocket measures four by 10 and we scored it at half an inch on both sides of the 10 inch side, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove a little bit of my backing here, bend it out. And this pocket is closed at the bottom, so make sure to put tape or glue across the bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna take my pocket and I am going to line it up down here in the corner, just like this. Once I have it perfectly lined up, I'll press down here and remove the rest of that backing. And then I will take off this tape as well. Clean up my mess a bit and then bend that down and just press it down nice and flat, okay? Just like that. Now we can go ahead with our bone folder again and just press it down really nicely. And then we're going to flip this flap over, flip this flap, and we are going to attach a pocket on the inside of our flap. So this pocket measures eight and an eighth by four and a quarter. And on the eight and an eighth side or length, you're gonna score it half an inch on each side and attach your tape. And then also attach a piece at the bottom to close it up. So it's just gonna attach right here like this. So again, I am just gonna remove a tiny bit of my backing from this side over here. And I'm gonna fold it so I can grab it. And I'm gonna line this side up and I'm gonna line the bottom. And once I have it where I want it, I'll press this down and remove that tape and then open it up and remove this side here. And then just fold it over nice and flat, just like that. All right, so now that we've got that all attached, we can go ahead and attach this flap to our pocket or our page here on top of our pocket. So we're going to just again go ahead, remove a tiny bit of our backing, fold it back on itself like this and then line it up with this edge here. Now it's not the full length of our pocket, so we're just gonna do our best to center it in there. And then once you have it where you want it, you can just go ahead and press that down and remove the backing, just like this. Okay, and then press that down, all right. So now we do need to, so now for the other side of our page, we are going to attach three flaps that will fit four by six photos. So our flaps measure six and three quarters by four and a quarter. And on the six and three quarter side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And you're gonna to need to do that three times for three flaps. Now we're going to attach these flaps. We're, there's going to be two coming in from the score line here and then one coming in from the edge. So there'll be one, two and then one coming in from the edge. So we're gonna line them up here so that there's about an eighth of an inch between the two of them. So I'm gonna start with this one here and I'm gonna attach it about this far from the edge, right up against that score line but of course not on it, just like that. And then we're gonna take the 
backing off the other one and again we're going to attach it about an eighth of an inch from its friend there just like so and then we can just burnish those down now we're going to attach this one over here on this side and the best way I can say to attach it is line it up all the way to the edge of the page here and then close these two over and just make sure you're in the center between both of them. So once you have it where you want it, just press it down there like this. All right, and now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna attach our magnet for our closure. So again, we're going to need a positive and a negative, just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing off of one of them. doesn't really matter which one. And then press it onto this flap here. Then open up these two flaps. Remove the backing over here. Just like so. Fold it over, press it down. And then you'll open it just like that. You'll open these two flaps, close them down, and then that will be the closure for that page. Now this page is finished, and I'm going to show you the variations. So this would be the front of this page. So what I've done differently, this is my page one. This is my page two. And then this is going to be my page three. So the only thing I've done is instead of attaching everything we just attached on this side, I just attached everything we just attached on this side on the front of the page. And then all of the stuff we did on the front of this page, I attached on the back of this page, okay? So the pages are identical you're just gonna attach the pieces to different sides of the page. That's how it's going to lay out. So now I'm going to show you this piece here. So this is what I was talking about. The insert that can come out of both sides. So I'm gonna put these pages aside and we are going to work on the insert. So I've got my insert here. So the insert measures 10 and a quarter by seven so it's ten and a quarter tall by seven inches wide and then what I've done is I have just used my um, crocodile corner chomper and it's the one that has the photo and the angle and I've just done little I've just angled all my corners there so now I'm going to do the same with the pattern paper that I want to attach and the pattern paper just measures ten by six and three quarters I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm just doing two at once here and I'm just going to just chomp all those edges just like that and then we can go ahead and attach them to our insert piece. So now all of my pattern paper is attached to both sides of my insert. So now we need to measure where our hole is going to go. So we know that our insert is 7 inches wide. So we're just going to make a mark at 3.5 on the top and the bottom about I would say half an inch down from the top doesn't have to be super specific 
And now I'm just gonna take my big bite and I'm gonna punch those holes. If you have a, um, the, what's that other one called? I can't even think of the name right now. It's a crocodile, right? You can use that one. I did have one, but I was traveling with it and they took it away from me at airport security. So, <laughs> unfortunately I don't have it anymore. All right, so now with my design team package, I got three colors of seam binding. I got brown, and then I got the pink color and then this pretty green. So I wanted to use all three for my book. So I'm going to cut two sections. And I'm going to cut them at the same angle so I can fit them through that hole. I did use a smaller hole punch just because I didn't want it to be gaping so now I'm just gonna run them through here all right so once you've got it through just go ahead and bring it through it like this and pull that knot nice and tight or as tight as you can get it and then I would just do the same thing on the other side. So once you've got both of your sides of ribbon attached, you can go ahead and just clean it up a bit like that. If you like the frayed edges, you can just leave them. And then this will just slide right into our pocket here. I can find where it opens. So I'm just going to slide right in there and through it and then you'll be able to pull it from both sides. All right and like I said you do have the option of just closing it up and then you don't have it doesn't come out top or bottom it only comes out the top and you wouldn't even really have to adjust the length of it just don't just don't do the punching and the ribbon down here okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and attach all my pattern papers and I'll just fast forward that and put some music on for you So before we attach our pages into our book, we are going to go ahead and work on the front and back inside cover. So as you can see, I've already done the back inside cover and now we're going to do the same thing on the front inside cover. It's going to look exactly the same. 
So the first thing we've got is a large pocket that's going to go across the bottom of our page. So the piece for this measures nine by four and a quarter tall and on the nine inch side you're going to score at half inch on both sides and attach your tape. So on one side we're going to go ahead and remove a little bit of our backing and then line it up to the front all the way to the edge of our book and all the way into the cover to the edge of the cover and into the corner so then once you have it where you want it make sure it's perfectly aligned you can go ahead and press down right here and remove that backing and then remove the backing on these ones thank god for this tool or we would be here all day alright and then just press it down just like that beautiful alright so now we've got two um, little waterfalls like we have on this side and they measure six and three quarters by four and a quarter so you're just going to go ahead and line them up all the way to the top and all the way to the edge of our pockets so just make sure it's lined up along the bottom here and along the top and then once it's where you want it all right, and then just give it a good press down with your bone folder. And then we're going to attach the second one here. And this time we'll just use our first one to line it up. A good burnish right there. Alright, so now we have our two little waterfall pieces on. So now we can open those up and attach our closure for our waterfall. So the closure measures six and a half this way by two inches wide. And then we've scored it half an inch down here, okay? So just one half an inch score mark and I'm just going to go ahead and remove all my backing and I'm just going to center it onto my pocket here all the way to the edge of the pocket but just try your best to center it top and bottom and then give it a good burnish and then we'll close it up and we will attach our magnet for our closure. So again, you just get a positive and a negative, just like so. Let them pop together. I really love these magnets that already have the adhesive on the back. And they're so nice and strong and they're so thin. It's just a game changer for people who use magnets. Alright, and then attach it not too close to the top or the sides because you want to be able to for your pattern paper to have a place to attach around that magnet. So take the backing off, close it over nice and flat, give it a good press, and then there's your closure. Alright, so now let's just get our pattern paper on here. So basically, the pattern paper for the whole book is just a quarter inch smaller than the elements in the book because it would take me forever to tell you all the measurements of the pattern paper but just remember I'm just going a quarter inch down on every measurement of the elements that we put in the book my desk is so messy right now so what I like to do with my magnets is I put a little bit of score tape on there like that and I open it, or I take the backing off, and then I just kind of make an X with
with another piece just like this. Take that backing off and then I take my little my little piece that I want to use, my pattern paper, and I just attach it after I have attached that tape. That just helps it stick all the way around the magnet. So I'm just going to leave that open for a second while I attach these pieces here. So just like that, super cute. My glue is sticky today, or it doesn't want to come out because I'm getting closer to the end of my bottle. Just attach that on there. Super cute. And then close that up. I really like this image. <laughs> it's going the wrong way. But I think I'm just still going to do it. Because I really like the, the image on there. So I'm just going to do it. I think it's clear enough. I think you can... You can see clear enough what it looks like. I actually got a request in my inbox to start showing when I attach my pattern papers. So I hope this makes someone out there happy. Alright, and then we'll just attach that piece there, just like so. So now that we've got our front and back inside covers done, we're going to go ahead and attach our papers. But what I want to do is just measure in half an inch at the top and the bottom just to give me a nice starting point. It doesn't have to be super perfect but I just want to make sure that I'm not too far in because then when I get to the back of my book I'm gonna have less room so we're gonna start by attaching our first page which is this one here so the first page my first page has the big pocket on the front and the other flaps on the back. And we're just gonna attach it right here, just like this. And while I'm attaching my pages, I think I'm gonna take these inserts out because they're throwing me off a little bit on where my pages line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove a little bit of my backing. Bring it so that I can see it here and then I'm going to line up my page. Then once I have it where I want it, I'm just going to press down there and then just drag the rest of my tape out and then just give that a good press down and we'll fold over and I'll attach my second page right here. So again, just remove a bit of your backing, bend it out so you can see it, and then this time we'll just line up this page with the previous page. All right, and then once you have that one where you want it, just pull off the backing of your tape, press it down, and then I always like to fold over the first page, make sure they line up, which they do, and then we will just attach our final page the exact same way. Just like so. Just line them up, press it down, and then 
pull off the rest of that tape just like so. Alright, so that is our pages in the book. So I did do some inserts for my pages, just some simple ones. You can decide what sizes you want. I just did a bunch of sizes throughout. These are 5x5, five five. and then inside this one, oh, I don't think you can see that far over. There's a 5x7 five and a 4x6. So you can decide however you want, what sizes you want for your inserts. Right. Okay guys, so the last thing I wanted to show you in the book. So you'll notice we have a little bit more space back here. We have an inch versus the half an inch we had at the front. So what I thought would be cute to do here is to make like a little, I don't even know what to call it, call it like a little folder. And I'm going to attach it to the top of this piece of cardstock and then it's going to just slide in here kind of like an insert and then I thought it would be cute because I've attached a magnet here to put some little Easter candies in there just like that and you could put a little piece of tape here um, and then so that the candies would stick but I want to be able to use it for something else afterwards. So I'm not going to do that. I think it'll stay just fine. So what I want to do is take this and attach it to this. And then it's removable afterwards. But that's why I left myself that extra space back there. Okay. So this piece here measures. I'm just going to give you the measurements for it really quick. measures 11 and a half by six and a half and then I just scored it at two and a half three seven seven and a half and that's for the actual uh, mechanism part of it and then these are just kind of fancy lines I made so those measure the, I mean you score at half inch and then one and then at five and a half and six all right and then that gives you that cute little piece so I'm just gonna do that I'm gonna attach it to this piece I'm gonna put the candy inside and then you'll see the kind of finished product in the walkthrough video so I hope you guys really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed making it for you. It's a super, super fun book with some beautiful Easter papers. So remember, if you haven't yet, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I would really like for you guys to do that. And I will see you in the walkthrough video.